63 years old. Uh, his name is Satan, for that was something uh, that happened when he was a child, but that's not important now. <laughs> <laughs> and we're following him along this trail through the forest, and suddenly we hear sounds ahead which clearly indicate that a group of chimpanzees has found good food. It's sort of, mm, ah, Well, 20 of them, something like that. Uh, so, Satan hurries along the trail, his hair bristles with excitement, and he comes to this big tree filled with feeding chimpanzees and ripe fruit, climbs up, sees a bunch of ripe red figs, goes straight there. There's a younger male feeding there, but that's fine because, you know, Satan's dominant, he's about two years older. <laughs> he threatens the young male who backs off screaming. Satan begins to feed, but what Satan didn't realize is that that young male's older brother is feeling higher in the tree. And hearing his kid brother in trouble, he comes swinging down, and the two brothers attack Satan. Now Satan screams, to my amazement, a very old female, who's been feeding quietly high in the canopy, comes swinging down. She drops her frail self onto these three battling males, and with her little hand, she hits at the two brothers. <laughs> And I think they were so startled that they just mildly threatened her, and Satan got away, and that was his ancient mother, Sprout. <coughs> so that's just one example of these long-term supportive bonds. And then when it comes to altruism, if a mother dies and leaves an infant older than three, because up until three, the infant depends on the mother's milk and will die if she dies. But if the child is older than three, and there's an older brother or sister, that child will be adopted. But this little infant, Mel, when he died, he had no older brother or sister, and we didn't think he'd make it. But to our amazement, a 12-year-old adolescent male adopted him, and he wasn't related at all. And he carried little Mel on his back, and he uh, let him share his nest at night, if Mel begged whimpering, um, Spindle shared his food, and he protected him if he got too near to socially roused males, and saved his life. So it's very clear, isn't it? There is no sharp line, after all, between us and the rest of the animal kingdom. It's a blurry line. We are part of and not separated from the rest of the animal kingdom.